Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time All Stars Season 7, Episode 1, where we are covering episodes 1 and 2 of the All Stars All Winners Season. Yes! And for those of you that have uh, not been with us before, hi, welcome. And for those of you that are coming back, it's good to see you again. Mm -hmm. My name's Gary. With me is my ever fabulous co star. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. And uh, yeah, so we've had a gander of a time over here um, uh -huh. <laughs> just to, to let everybody know we already basically recorded most of this episode and then <laughs> realized we had a tech issue so here we wah, are wah. we're doing it again take two <laughs> <laughs> so much fun that being so said much fun <laughs> let's jump into our first segment shall we <laughs> let's do it racers start your engines and may the best drag queen win yeah, so uh, not drag queen, best winner, best legend, yes. whatever, whatever. Yeah, there's, I think she's either le saying legends or winners. I think she's saying winners. I think. Something I like could be sense. wrong. I'll watch another episode and find it. Anyway. Yeah. That being <sighs> said, uh, so we're going to put the pedal to the metal. We're going to give, if there are any uh, serves, swerves, and nerves, and our overall thoughts. Our uh, serves, as a reminder, are typically positive, like kind of yes queen moments. Um, swerves are the negatives, like those are probably your road hazards, things you should have avoided or not done. Um, mm -hmm. And then lastly is nerves, which can be both positive and negative. Because it could be like, you know, oh. I can't believe you got the nerve to pull that off, girl, uh, you know, in, in the most positive way. And then there's also the... Ooh. What nerve? Right, like whatever made you think you could get away with that, like, you know... How dare you? <laughs> right, right. Like, like your gay card will be revoked, kind of a thing. Ah. Uh, so that being said, uh, Damon, who you got uh, comments for from these first two episodes? Sure. So I put down phenomenal opening, and overall, this is generally an amazing weekend. A amazing weekend. <laughs> amazing <laughs> couple of episodes. Uh, I was so impressed with this new format. Um, so for those who don't know, spoiler alert, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Um, no queen is going home. Mm -hmm. So all of the winners are staying in for the long call. So we're going to get them, you know, episode one, to episode, whatever. And the top four will compete after winning legendary legend stars, um, to compete, to win the queen of all queens crowd. Mm hmm um, and I just, I'm really enjoying this. This is an amazing cast. It's, it's an amazing work. And some of the stuff that they've already done in these first two episodes has been cool. We got a wonderful re reading challenge, which is kind of classic for the first episode of any All-Stars. Mm -hmm. um, but we did a uh, video, like song and dance to a song thing that was kind of early. That's new. They did it first. Uh, we'll get to that later. Mm. Um, and then an amazing runway. And then we did Snatch Game. Um, Snatch Game was rather early. But again, I don't think there's as many queens mm -hmm. um, right. in this season than there are in other seasons. So they have eight queens, so we might as well do it now. Um, so I was very, very, very much impressed with the look and feel of this new season and what they're doing. Um, on top of that... Uh, I have to give serve, mm -hmm. serve to Miss Shay Coulee and her I'm Crowning Runway. Baby, when she took that turn on the runway and started down the aisle, I was gooped, gagged, globbled, bewildered, all the goggles. Go yeah, it was, I, I don't normally have such a physical reaction in a good way to to a runway look, but everything was so amazing from this regal braided African Egyptian headdress piece to these uh, prosthetic ears with the um, plugs in them, the big giant jade plugs in them, to the way this outfit just looked and was so embodying some the African some African culture. It just it just it made me like I said 
physically react. I was amazed by it. Mm. Amazed. Overall, the queens in the um, this runway, this I'm crowning runway, this first runway were pretty fucking amazing. But that was like, oh, top tier. I I agree with you. Like everything you said, Shay served amazingly that first runway. Um, I mean, yeah, like I mean, when everybody knew that Shay was in it, it was like, okay, well, she's she's one of the top contenders, and she definitely mm. has shown that in these first two episodes. I think she's guaranteed to be in the top four, like uh, unless mm-hmm. unless something happens that we don't know about, some twist, or you know, she somehow falters. But she's she's really got the whole package and and that delivery for that um that oh, particular yeah. thing. I mean, to be honest, episode one was her episode. Like if there's oh, any yeah. if there's any queen that gets a whole episode that's like theirs, quote unquote, um, that has their stank all over it, it happens to be episode one because like not only did Shay deliver amazingly on the runway in terms of like her outfit for the I'm crowning theme, but um the Naomi Campbell like mm-hmm. experience I mean, just, you know, Shay's reaction and then getting to, you know, stomp the runway and have Naomi, like, talk to her and give her compliments and for them to have that moment together, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and snaps to Miss Naomi for, like, holding it together because I seriously thought she was going to lose it. Like that Mm. she was going to, you know, break down a little bit. But, um, but, you know, she, she, she is so well poised like it knows how to to carry herself so for sure yes 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 agreed um for myself there was a couple of things uh so i'm gonna give a serve on episode one for the opening uh runway like i just i thought that like pretty much overall episode one was so good but the looks that were being (laughs) done um it's it's an all winter season and it shows. Yes, so true. It shows. So true. The coin has been dropped. <laughs> the coin has been dropped. Right. Uh, the top designers have been called. <laughs> the, 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 the the word was put out. These queens um, did all of this stuff and all this work. I mean, who, I'm, I'm sure some queens probably made some things on their own, but overall, I was just flabbergasted with just how amazing this stuff worked this work this was right yes. and i agree that um the coin is a big factor but all of these queens for the most part have an aesthetic style silhouette and look that is distinctly theirs and so we expect that to be well represented over the course of the season um in in what they're bringing um i want to give a swerve uh we'll talk about it more later the legends rusical <laughs> Girl. Mm-hmm. Who? 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 Where? Who? I sound like an owl. Who? Who in their right mind in production thought for the all winter season, you're going to take eight drag queens and you're going to put them together on a stage and you're going to let them self choreo mm-hmm. I'm sorry what what any other season we get a guest choreographer mm-hmm. so why did we not have a guest choreographer to keep them like hurt, like not hurting like cats like actually keep them mm-hmm. in line and give them a thing and super fucking challenge them instead of letting them the challenge is for them to work together to come up with something yeah. Which was not that revolutionary. Mm-mm. And I need a clip yeah, that talks about the edit. Blame it on the edit. Baby. Blame it on the edit. Or not. That edit on that on that number, it was choppy, and it needed to be. Because even some of the clips that they show, the girls were not in sync. It was not the best. I'm just... Yes. Highly disappointed. So swerve, swerve on the on the on the musical number. If you're gonna have a musical number, do it right. Don't ask these queens to do this thing. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna just gonna say it like it is. They're all winners. They uh, they pay people to do this stuff now. Yeah. So yeah, are we yeah. trying to show that they don't know how to do this? Yeah. Mama, um, 
I uh, I'll get to my thoughts later. Let right. me. I'll just let me just skip it. Let yeah. me. Just... And then Woo. I'm gonna give Nerve. Uh, I gotta serve up Nerve for Jinx Monsoon. Her her crowning look. Oh, yes. So regal. So so beautiful. Like and 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 absolutely Jinx. I mean, it was, it was phenomenal to see her have come back and so elevated, and the whole leg shtick. With this yeah. big, like, Elizabethan ball gown deal that, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that there's a hidden split in the in the skirting so she could stick her leg out. Like, Bob the Drag Queen talked about it in Pit Stop, which cracked my ass up to no end. Because Bob was like, how, 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 how do you, <laughs> how do you craft an outfit to make that thing happen? Because she was like, it's a hoop skirt, right? Yeah. Like, like, a hoop skirt yeah. doesn't have a split in it. Like, how do you make this thing work was really funny. Yeah. And as we kind of talked about earlier, uh, for those that don't know, fashion or, or costuming or whatever, more than likely this was the the boning of this hoop skirt was built into the dress. Mm-hmm. Um, therefore, it allowed it to have that slit because it was all kind of built that way. But that is not, I didn't say this earlier, that's probably not an easy feat. No. That takes, that's, the, that's, a, that's a, again, coin drop. For this <laughs> right because somebody had to figure out like how to take a how to take the gown how it's classically made mm-hmm. and then really the gag is figuring out how you take a corseted queen who's wearing this outfit to make this other thing happen this kind of sticky moment that works so well that you can you can push aside folds of fabric that don't make you realize that there's a split so that the leg can pop out like that was that was that was something else. So mm-hmm. yeah, I was I was really and, that, and that's not to disregard or take away from anything that the other queens had. They all did really look uh, really good. Shay looked phenomenal. Um, I have to give recognition to Trinity the Tuck. Honey, honey, honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> Probably the best outfit, biggest outfit ever worn on that little stage mm-hmm. in all of the seasons. Um, God bless Trinity for trying to walk in that thing because that was kind of hysterical. It was not going to happen. <laughs> but this <laughs> massive train, this itty bitty like um, um, mermaid at the bottom kind of moment that just fell into this like big ass train and <laughs> ran aside because I just remember it. You notice she had to walk out first when they left the runway. That's why she was kind of in the center, because oh. she still had that. She still had that outfit on, and she had to go. <laughs> and you could, I mean, they always speed up when they leave the stage. They speed it up at that right. moment. But you, I noticed it. Like she goes, and then everyone else starts moving. <laughs> <laughs> and it, because it takes a, it takes a little bit, um, right? I'm sure it wasn't easy, and I'm sure. Um, Getting her ass off that stage wasn't easy either. No, she because because she doesn't really have a whole lot of leg room. Like she doesn't have a oh. lot of give, um, to to um, for your for your walking gait. Mm-hmm. Like the pace is, you know how how quickly you move, but like the distance that you could move. Yeah. So yeah, I imagine it was a whole thing trying to get her up and down steps. Um, mm-hmm. in that gig but that goes to show like that's a queen who's been there she's been there twice like she was in regular season then she was in all-stars so she knows how the, how the sausage gets made so i think that's the one thing we'll see out of this season is a lot of these queens bringing something that has not been that they didn't know they could do before and they and so they might exactly. really be pushing the boundary on some things exactly um, oh before i forget so it kind of goes without saying If you haven't already seen like these two episodes, we're gonna spoil it all over the place. So <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> yep, it's a little, a little late to have that uh, uh, moment or that point of the conversation, eh, but yeah, whatever. So no, there was um there was so much stuff. I mean, you know, the these first two episodes were done really well. I'm still not sure how I feel about them being aired together. It might have been a mm. broadcasting schedule thing, but I was like, I mean, I was okay with it. But in my mind, I was like, they could have left them separate. Like we could have totally they ended one have. episode. And then a week later, with it. gotten two. Yeah, like I watched them separately. So I watched um, um, episode one and Untucked for episode one on Friday, and then I watched episode two on Saturday. Okay. Um, I you know you're already you already know what's going on, and 
no offense, I was spoiled on a lot of things because of, of Twitter and whatever. Right. I almost yelled in the um, Drag Race Entourage chat, like, God damn it. It hadn't even been twenty. It hadn't even been twenty four hours. It was on Friday, and I had a lot of spoils already. Mm. Um, um, like for example, the Knife Queen. Yes. So let's talk about let's before we move on. Let's talk about the Knife Queen real quick. Um, yeah. So you know, there's all this promotion. They do the tour. It's the PR. You know, mm-hmm. all the interviews. There's all this stuff. They do their cast reveal. Eight queens. Eight queens. Eight queens. Eight queens. Eight queens. And then, uh, what was it, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. like one Tuesday or two days Wednesday. before the actual episode airing, um, we get the first eight minutes, I think it is. So it's the mm-hmm. preview or whatever the hell they call it. Um, yeah. So we get the opening, which we'd already seen most of the opening anyways, because they already did that way back when they revealed who the cast mm-hmm. was. They showed all their entrances. They, But they did give us more. Correct. The, the the preview did give us more like backstory and what have you, um, so I was kind of appreciative of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they all come in, they do their thing, they get their lines, we get their preview, we get their all that moment, we get their judge, and then the Vivian comes in, and then after right. the Vivian, right, we get this random ninth queen in the black and white outfit with their their face hidden, mm-hmm. um. So uh, I'll I'll admit I clocked it on the day that that aired as to who it was. I didn't know the instant I watched it Mm -hmm. because I was like, wait, who the hell is that? But then then my brain wouldn't stop thinking about it. Like and I started trying Uh, to puzzle out who it was and I kept going back. And I did read some comment things on Twitter on that preview uh, YouTube post because a lot of people were commenting. Now, this makes me laugh because we we know because we've watched who the ninth queen is. Um, what who's you know under the hat so to speak? But I was yeah. laughing because the people were throwing up some names, girl, and I was like, that is not their body. I'm like, that is not Kenya <laughs> Michaels. That is not Serena Cha Cha. Like, I mean, you know, like they were throwing out these names, and I'm like, and none of these queens were winners. I was like, the fuck? Like, and then on top of it, I was like, I don't like. All I kept thinking is, I don't understand how this works. Like, this has to be a bit or a gag or something because yeah. the ninth queen. Like, they absolutely can do this, but they've never not included the ninth or extra person or the secret reveal or whatever. They've never made that person a real contestant and not included them in the PR stuff. Yeah. So, yes, for those who don't know, um, I will own I was spoiled on Twitter, but the, the minute the preview came out. They put, she comes out, and I'm like, I don't know who this is. Mm. And I will admit, I was genuinely unknown. I wasn't. I was. Un, I wasn't sure. And so I go through like all the winners, mm-hmm. and like put my like putting in putting my my RuPaul like you know constant thinking cap on, and like going through and trying to be like, okay, so who could this be? Well, it can't be this one. It can't be that one. Definitely can't be that one. Um, and. I couldn't lock on a root like a U.S. Rue queen. So then I was like, "Well, is it an international one?" Mm, and it's yeah. possible it could have been. The first one that came to mind was Pangina Hills. I'll, I'll okay put that out there. And because we know she has been in the United States because she did um, pit stop recently, right? So I was kind of like. So maybe they, you know, why was she here? Maybe she was here because, oh, hey, she's doing All-Stars, All-Winners. Um, did she win her season? I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. I think she did. She had to. Whatever. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm racking my brain, racking my brain. And, of course, within 24 hours, Twitter has spoiled the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. And I find out, oh, it's Raven. Right, and I, so it. I figured out that it was Raven on the on the day that it came out because the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, I know that body, I know that shape, I know that skin color. Mm-hmm. I was like, it has to be Raven, and because Raven is so iconic with her face, there's no way you wouldn't know it was Raven if you had been able to clock any of the face, any of the mug. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So, so that is the the gag reveal is that Raven is the ninth queen. And she comes in and like, you know, Kiki's with the rest of the girls and joins them. 
And so I'm like, okay. What's what, going on? Right. What, 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 what is this business? And then Rue comes in the room. Yay. And they're all lined up. And Rue's like, you know, talking to them. And she even recognizes, you know, Raven. It kind of oh, keeps hey, moving on. Right. It just kind of <laughs> keeps talking. And I'm like, okay, when are you going to say it? When are you going to? Any 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 moment now, you can draw attention to the rhino in the room, like the awkward <laughs> moment, you know, like it doesn't take a long time to be, it seemed. And then she finally was like, wait, Raven, what are you doing here? And then, you know, it's revealed that it's a whole gag. It's a skit like, you know, that they were acting and she's not really there, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and the thing I did clock was that Raven was done fully up in, in drags um, in the geesh in the face and the whole bit. Mama Rue was not, but that's because Rue was just there as RuPaul Charles as the host. Yeah. So Raven didn't really have to do her face that day, quote unquote. I'm or if she did, she did like minimal makeup because she, you know, was just presenting as, you know, male Rue as opposed to Mama Rue. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was an interesting little moment in the first oh, episode. Oh, yes. Indeed. Nice. Huh. You ready to move on to our next segment? Let's do it. All right. All right, kids, it's uh, time for snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses of these episodes. Will we consider what the highs and the lows of these particular episodes that we're reviewing? So, David, we'll go with you first. Who are you giving snaps to? Right. Um, I am giving snaps to Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> oh, MG, talk about a masterclass in a snatch game. Um, Jinx Monsoon as Judy Garland in this in this episode, episode two, was one of I said I ch I'm changing my mind just a little bit. One of, if not the best, snatch game performance I have ever seen. Mm. I was amazed it was so well thought so well thought about so well performed mm -hmm. so well done from the mannerisms to the to the judaisms <laughs> to the 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 playing to the camera and and or like is this my camera and all that stuff and then on top of that jinx was singing RuPaul songs, probably because I couldn't get copyright, mm -hmm. uh, to in the style of Judy Garland. Mm -hmm. Wow, so amazing, so wonderful. Can't believe it. I was I was amazed. And don't get me wrong, I think overall in the episode, this was Jinx's episode in regards to Sasha. It was it was mm -hmm. hands down hers. Um, she did amazing as Judy. She did really good as Natasha Leone. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I, it, yeah, mm, just, nah, amazing. Yeah, it was, uh, it was so, so well crafted. Now, mm -hmm. Jinx, to be fair, does give credit to another queen that she knows that is a Judy Garland impersonator that she's very good friends with. And I guess they, you know, she asked for permission to be able to do like their version of Judy, which to be fair, like, um, you know, some some impersonators of Judy have done really well through the past decades. Um, some of them are very specific to their Judy. Like they do, you know, like Judy at the Palace or they do, you know, like, you know, Judy, you know, in the younger years. Like they like they kind of pick a particular thing. Some queens are really good that they do her, like her whole bibliography, like her whole life, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they age themselves and stuff. But, you know, that that is impersonation to the highest degree is really an art craft in, in and of itself. So, I mean, did Jinx look like Judy Garland? Eh, yes. Yeah. I mean, the hair yeah. helps. The outfit kind of yeah. helps. Yes. But the reality is Jinx probably needs to lose about 60 pounds um, because Judy was a tiny little thing. Like, yes. you know, fair, 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 like fair. small, wafy, thin, um, yes. you know. Uh, so, and that's not a dig on Jinx by any means. I It just goes to show, like, you don't have to look identical to them 
for a yes, Snatch game, you're personifying really well. them. Right. Yes, it was a, an amazing job. And also to give a little bit of honor, honorable mention, mm -hmm. um, I am going to give some honorable mention to Raja as Diana Vreeland. Oh, yes. I, that makeup work. Amazing. Top notch. I So I didn't know who Diana Vreeland was fully. I will own that. That's me. Mm -hmm. That's on my, my, my back. But they showed a picture. Right. And then she came out. And she looked like the picture. Like, what the what the fuck? Like, yeah. it was, like, uh, amazing, amazing work. Just absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, um, Raja did an amazing job. Uh, her playing Madam, that was a whole new <laughs> level of something to personify a puppet mm -hmm. as a freestanding character. Now, I'm old enough to remember Madam. And mm -hmm. to have seen Madam in shows, uh, specifically like interviews, you know, on, on like the Mike Douglas show and different things, you know, and rerun and, and things of that nature. Um, Madam was on uh, the Hollywood Squares, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that Raja pulled this like gay, uh, like pop culture reference from the, the 60s through the 80s to 2020s, you know, reference point, I thought was amazing. Um, there is an interesting video online that someone created on YouTube that is like all of the personalities that the different characters were portraying, like the different um, queens were doing. So I mm. thought it was interesting because they were showing like real photographs and then like what they look like. I will say that I think that Raja's madam could have been kind of looked better, but mm -hmm. she definitely delivered and really surprised me as to how well she got some of the mannerisms down. Yeah. Um, and I agree with you that the, that the Deanna, uh, I don't know if it's Deanna or Diana. How is our properly? Uh, I, I've been saying Deanna Vreeland. I don't know. <laughs> but how Vreeland, right? I agree with you. Like it was, it was a little spooky. Like how yeah. she got that makeup down. Um, but yeah, like I mean, some of them, you know, they did, they did so so well. Uh, you know, although I will say for a snatch game, like so, I was a little unsure about the whole like two epi two games thing when they revealed that the queens were going to do two characters. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be like the Bob the Drag Queen thing, and you were just going to have to quickly like change your wig on. and some props yeah. and like change your makeup like super fast and that wasn't really the case like they treated like it was two whole separate episodes smashed into one and they had a whole nother cast of celebrities um they rearranged the seating a little bit which i thought was slightly interesting because i figured that they were going to leave them all right where they were mm. to make it easier for the audience watching to know who who is who um in terms of the queens but that's not what that wasn't the case i do no um, so yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, but it also kind of, um, it showed me a little bit that I was nervous about how the younger Queens and I'm calling them younger Queens, the younger winners of the more recent seasons might feel that they have either more work to do, or I, I just don't know how to phrase it. Like it's the strangest thing. The only thing that comes to mind is like, do they have enough seasoning? And the only reason mm. I say that is because I think some of the queens who have been around for a number of years have really honed in who they are, their aesthetic, their look, the things they bring, not only to the stage, but like having done this before and probably have all been people who studied drag race and like all stars and all this kind of stuff. Like they, they, they really put in a, a huge amount of like, preparation and it's not to say that the younger like more recent winners haven't but i just don't think they've had as much time like as mm -hmm. much experience and so it's a little concerning for me as to whether or not like evie and jada and the vivian are gonna be able to like yeah. um deliver at the same height or same level as some of the other queens they could they totally could yeah um, but I, they're they're also very much dealing with the i think they're a little awestruck Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Vivian talked about it in her episodes about how she is just so happy to be in the U.S. and doing the show and, and everything. And I don't see that being I don't personally see it being as a negative, but it could potentially be a problem. You know, her dealing with like being in the U.S. and doing it this way. She's talked about how she was the she's not sure how her drag is going to be um interpreted to the american girls but so far it's been great um well what i did like is one of the things that one of the queens said was 
bitch, what you see on Instagram is the real thing. Oh yeah. About the Vivian. Yeah. Like like she doesn't do all this like, you know, face tuning bullshit. Like mm-hmm. her mug is her mug, and that's the end of the story, and she looks just as gorgeous in person as she does. And I was like, work. Like, you know, that's mm-hmm. really nice for the, to get some props or some recognition from some of your yeah. sisters that way. And we, we saw the tears from Jada in like the first episode. And I can understand her her emotions about mm. this. Right. Unlike a lot of the queens, um, she didn't get right after she won the opportunity to tour and um Kai Kai and Kiki, you know, Kiki with the other queens. Right. She was in lockdown because of the pandemic. Agreed. And um I can see where that like hesitation could come from right not ready to stand up you know with the other queens as it were and um but i i think i agree with you to a point that there is some potential growing that are prep that they the some of the queens would not have an opportunity to have so for example while say is technically the most recent winner. Um, she was not, she's also had a whole season beforehand um, several years ago to kind of work and polish. Right. And then All Stars, and then now uh, All Stars five. Five, yes. Right. And she's also one of the people that has the advantage of having done two other seasons. Mm-hmm. So Monet, Shay, and Trinity have all been through this twice already, and the rest of the queens have only been through one, like because mm-hmm. they were winners in their in their original season. Um, yeah. So and and I think that that gives them an advantage in a strange way that you know well, I don't know if it'll play out that way later, but I wouldn't be the least yeah. bit surprised that it really has seasoned them to knowing what's going on, like how to maneuver and navigate this, this television show contest concept, you know, what, mm-hmm. they're, what they're doing. So yeah. yeah. Agreed. All righty. For my snaps, um, I said a nine year callback moment. So I agree with you that, oh. that Judy is like, you know, like amazingly well done. And this, this coincides with it. Jinx monsoon, this bitch. <laughs> this bitch done this. We're gonna we're gonna play it here in a second. Oh god. The audio oh, is amazing. God. From the from this thing that happens, she done like pulled the rug out from underneath Ross, Michelle, and Rue with this amazing moment. If you did not watch the original season five airing of when Jinx was on and they had this challenge where they had to make over veterans these um, gay veterans these yeah. gay veterans this is what she's referencing um and they did they did a beautiful like splice uh into it so that the viewing <laughs> audience if they had zero clue as to what jakes was talking about as judy garland this would make some sense and i'd like oh. to take a moment is that my camera yeah <laughs> i'd like to take a moment you see there's a veteran named dave who's been on your show and he said uh, he was worried that he killed me <laughs> I think I might have killed Judy Garland. And I want to say, Dave, if you're watching, you're not responsible, darling. It's it's all right. You're forgiven. Yes. There you go. Dave, you're off the hook, honey. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Uh, oh. David, when I tell you I screamed, I mean, I screamed. I was not ready. I wasn't either. The moment she said the name Dave, I instantly knew where she was going, what she was referencing. And I was like, this bitch has the biggest cojones of anybody (laughs) on this entire universe of Drag Race to call back to one of the most infamously awkward moments that has ever happened. If you have heard the whole Pearl Rue moment, 
and the whole dramatic pause and Pearl going, uh-huh. is there something, something on, on my, my face? My face. <laughs> Bitch. This this Bitch. moment that we're referencing lives in infamy with that, where Jinx Monsoon and RuPaul are in the workroom and Ru's doing the rounds and she's talking to the queens about, you know, how they're doing with their partners. And the partner decides to drop that bomb. Bomb. And both bomb. Jinx and Ru do not know what to do. Like, it is deathly silent. Oh, God, girl. And I... the look on Ru's face... Like no response, like just, just, just masked. I, I feel like she's not even professionally Ru. poised. She's professionally quiet, but she, like, you could tell she is like, what did this motherfucker just say? Producer, producer, <laughs> I need something, anything, give me something. I need you to do something oh because I can't. Because oh. <laughs> I, I remember that moment. I remember that yes. scene. Um, I don't remember how how I reacted to it at the time, but it was it was it was a moment. Oh, it, it was, was moment. it was gobsmacking. It was yes. astounding that this gay veteran says that he thinks he is the reason Judy Garland is dead. I mean, like, talk about oh. a gotcha moment of anything uh-huh. that has ever happened. And Jinx has the a mitigated gall to <laughs> to work in a gag moment. Because she'd already done the camera thing once before, and she she does it at the beginning of that, and it is so hysterical. She's like, is this my camera? Like, you know, she's just uh-huh. personifying this kind of, like, airy, not quite fully with it, Judy. And she delivers this amazing moment to say that it's okay. Like, you're not to blame. You're not to blame. Right. Death. You're not responsible for my dying. Like, Girl. just astounding. Astounding. Ast- down uh, moment amazing probably one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite things that has ever happened in the entire series mm-hmm. anything of, of rupaul's drag race like just yeah and the look on michelle's face because she gets <laughs> it right away and she looks to rue and the look on rue's face and the two of them are having a moment like like they are dying and they're like this bitch is doing this right here right now like she's mm-hmm. yeah and now i'm dead <laughs> right and i don't know how the crew kept it together like, like I want to know if Sarge is still there as a cameraman. Hey, Sarge. Um, mm. And like, wh- like, does the did the crew know what was happening? Like, how do you keep a straight face? Like, how do you not literally die of humor right? in that moment to know what she is doing? Like, it's just right. Uh, was it was Emmy winning? Like, astounding, yeah. just uh, insane, insane. <sighs> nine years that bitch spent that long like preparing to deliver that moment to us like that that's 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 crazy all right now if i can compose myself moving on uh eye rolls okay david oh. here we go like <laughs> uh-oh give me a moment okay so here we are so <laughs> i am giving my eye rolls mm-hmm. to the legend's performance Okay. So, let me break it down for you. Oh, boy. The queens are asked to write lyrics to, like, do a verse, basically, drop a couple verses, sentences, basically, for this RuPaul song, Legends. Mm -hmm. Or Legendary. Legends, yeah. And then they're asked to choreograph the number. We've heard this before. We've heard, we've seen this channel before. We know it. Oh, it's a thing. It's, they always do it. Why, like you said, why this now? What was up with this? Like, no choreography, like, no choreographer. They had to choreograph themselves. Right. And, Mama, that was garbage. Mama, this is garbage. Mama, that this choreogra- is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that choreography was. Basic AF, mm-hmm. but what would you expect from eight queens trying to do something? But I could I could have probably picked up that choreography in, in several minutes because I was seeing it repeated over and over and over again. Um, except for the moments when they were doing their own thing, it was very much a very repetitive, like simple choreography. And granted, they probably also had to teach it to the dancers um, who are part of their pit crew. 
there's one in the pit crew that has cut, like maybe two, but one in particular that is, I'm like, every time I see him, I'm like, mm -hmm, you are beautiful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so we did, we, we, we do that. So we got that going. Mm -hmm. On top of it, and and Bob mentioned this in in um, pit stop, and I think it may be in the co-buyer. One of the two. Nobody had anything that worked together, <laughs> outfit wise. Not a single fucking one of them. <laughs> and this looks like this is the last thing I brought. For some of them, not all of them. Don't get me wrong. There's some really nice, like Mama. I love the Vivian's look. Vivian's was really amazing. Hers, I think, was one of the only ones. No, I like Trinity's. I liked, um, uh, oh, what's her name? <clears throat> it just left my head. Oh, it just left my head. Um, Trin no, 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 no. Uh, oh, uh, Monet's. I did like Monet's. Mm hmm. So there are a few that I was like, oh, this is really, really good. But the rest of them, mm, what was this? I don't, I don't, I didn't like this. I didn't like it. But it was, it was so mixed matchy mm -hmm. and awkward and awful that I didn't understand, like, where did this come from? Like, who... Who gave the idea? Like, we're just going to all be eight queens just dancing around doing this random choreography together, doing this number. And we all got to kind of shine at this moment, but not really, because mm -hmm. no one was shining. And I just, it just fell so flat. It put the brakes on what was, a, was becoming a really amazing episode. But don't get me wrong, I love both episodes, and I think this was a phenomenal opening two episodes for the season. But when you... <laughs> this was like a low point. So what's weird is, so there were low points in both episode one and episode two. I agree with you. The whole musical, like that number was the bad point in episode one. It was like a, it was like a, it was like the compliment sandwich thing, like where mm -hmm. the beginning and the end are good. Uh -huh. but, but we don't talk about what happened in the middle because the middle mm -hmm. was bad. Like, mm -hmm. even the edit, oh. Baba, yeah. the edit. Oh. Like, they the cut, 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 like, back and forth all over the place. They were trying to pick the better moments. And even then, they didn't okay. do very good because there were a couple of moments where all the queens are moving. And I'm like, they are not in sync. <laughs> I don't know what's going and, on. And, and fuck, Trinity forgot her own words. Yes. And and let me add a little just element, and I don't know if it's because I've got two fla I had two fans going or whatever. I didn't understand half what the fuck they were saying. Mm. So I don't know. Again, I'm I will admit I'm at a disadvantage right now. Um, I talked about it during our first um, pre-show. <laughs> um, uh, my AC has been down, uh, so we've had fans going up in in the windows and things. So. Um, it's entirely possible, and because on Friday night it was hot as fuck in this house, mm -hmm. so I had a small little fan near me, and then a big fan in the window going. But I tried watching it just before we got on here. Right. I still didn't really understand what they were saying. Right. It's pretty sad when you probably have to put on closed caption just to be able to mm -hmm. catch the words that the queens are saying for their own mm -hmm. class. Yes, agreed. Yes, because you agree. couldn't read lips for some of them. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Go ahead, Carrie. What about you? Well, so mine's kind of in conjunction with yours. For eye rolls, I wrote star, and star is in quotes. Star level preparation? Question mark? Mm. Baby, it's all stars seven. It is the all winter season. Like this isn't this isn't us making a whole new series. They inserted into All Stars an All Winner season. We're calling it All Star Seven, All Winners. All so, Winners. Mm -hmm. So they didn't make like an All Queens, like an All Crowned Queens new series separate from All Stars. So that being said, I have a high expectation. Every single one of you bitches won your season. Or what at All-Stars. So I'm expecting some of the most phenomenal, top-rated stuff to be presented. 
Mm-hmm. And that is not the case in both episodes. There are weird mm. moments where things kind of aren't that good. Um, Evie, honey, your hair <laughs> from the walk-in. <laughs> Did you only use egg whites? Like, what happened? Did you not use got to be glue hairspray? Did you not, like, shellac the motherfuck out of that? Like, did you, like, I don't, I don't it was like, it. W- I don't want to say that the hair was a last minute thought. It was like it wasn't really thought through that mm. that hair has to last probably, like, eight to ten hours. Mm-hmm. And so structurally, it should never move. It should just be there. But the fact that it kept, like, dying and dying <laughs> And getting worse, like, and they showed that, I was like, it makes sense. They couldn't edit around it. They couldn't get away with, like, just trying to be nice to Evie and not make it look like her hair fell apart, which it did. Um, You know, there was just just things, you know, like that that I was a little um, surprised by randomly. You know, um, Mm -hmm. the musical, how people weren't that well prepared to do a whole choreo number and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, like, and I know that they're not all dancing queens, but it's like, really? Yeah. Um, so. still. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, like, so the second episode. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, stop the eye roll for a moment, and I am going to give, uh, props, because we haven't talked about it yet. The very first lip sync of the season in episode one. Mama, when I tell you, when I tell you historically one of the the best lip syncs ever in the franchise that was the end of episode one ella fitzgerald old mcdonald had a farm first of all when they started doing it i nearly fell off the couch i was like (laughs) what what in the what what is this business i was like this is not whitney houston this is not christina aguilera this is not Cher. this is not madonna this is not this is not diana ross you know, whatever it right was, it is it not was... a classic gay icon queen like it is not gaga it is not i was so confused for the briefest second and i got over it so damn fast because then i was like oh. yes honey i want old school i want i want this stuff to teach the children's about yes. music about like the classic art of of you know lip syncing in a whole different way and how it's not about like death drops and you know belly flops and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I have never heard this version before, but the fact that it was Ella, I was like, okay, this is gonna get wild, and it sure as fuck did. Yes, yes, I <laughs> stunting, amazing as a lip sync. Yes, 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 yes. I watched it again recently. It's I just it's gonna be one of my all time favorites. To me, it's right up there with uh Raven Mm-mm. Juju B and and Kenya and Latrice. Do you know what I mean? Like these mm-hmm, iconic mm-hmm, mm-hmm. lip syncs you will never forget. I was like, this is this was amazingly one of them. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That being said, <laughs> now we go to episode two. The Adele lip sync. Like, okay, I was not thrilled that it was Adele. I was like, oh, okay, it's Adele. We spent some money for this one <laughs> mm. as a song writes. But Trinity, Trin, honey, you lost your damn wig. Did you know that, Damon? Did you catch that? It, yes. did, it did not go flying. But it was not pinned down like it should have been. I caught it when I first watched it, and someone's already made a whole YouTube, like, less than one minute video showing in slow-mo, like, the fact that Trinity was losing her hair. Because, unfortunately, in the edit, if you pay close enough attention, her hair has moved, and she moves it. Like, she plays with it, and, like, so when they go to stand back up for the end of the lip sync, she... Her hair doesn't even look the same as it used to. Like, like not mm-hmm. that it's bad, but I was just like, "Yeah, are we serious about this? Yeah, this is all I, stars, yeah. all winners level preparation, and and you yeah. can't even keep your hair like pinned down." I I believe that was intentional. Really? Mm-hmm. She knew she wasn't going to win a star, and she would have then had to have blocked somebody. So if she had won, it would have put an immediate target on her back. 
whoever she blocked. So why let why not let the other girl who is doing really pretty amazing go ahead, go on and win? It was Jinx. She won. She won Snatch Game. So why not just let her win? Get a star. And then she gets she gets to be the bad guy. Interesting, isn't it? So for those of you that cannot see because you're not watching the video, I am sitting here with my arms crossed and I am highly contemplating this theory that that Damon is presenting because this is one of the things that is definitely different about this season. So strategy I, is a is big key. element of this mm -hmm. gameplay because already we've had talks of alliances mm -hmm. and we've already had the queens in the first two episodes different viewpoints from episode one to episode two about how to play the game and how they're going to yeah. play the game because yeah. of this whole um, so what they did was they borrowed the element from the UK where you get a repeater badge. So now you get a legendary legend star. Legendary pin. legend star. And the top four queens at the end of the season are the ones with the most pins. They go on to the lip sync Lala Perusa Smackdown. Mm -hmm. So we know how it's going to end like that. Like it's already been spelled out. So really it is a points system and it is a game that you're playing. And what Damon just said, because I'm reiterating, because I'm processing it, is that Trinity <laughs> intentionally threw the lip sync so she wouldn't win because even though she wasn't going to get a pin, she'd have to block somebody and that would mm -hmm. increase the target on her back. So by letting Jinx win, Jinx... Who's already right, doing is al really well. Right, is already performing really highly. She gives Jinx the ability to block with the quote-unquote platinum plunger. It wouldn't be the first time it's Trinity has thrown a... No, it's not. It's gold. Anyways. Yeah. It wouldn't be... And it wouldn't be the first time Trinity has thrown a lip sync. Remember old, late, old, whatever bodysuit bullshit that she did that one time in, um, in All-Stars 4? Hmm. 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 Girl, you really got my brain moving, like thinking about this whole this whole thing that she intentionally didn't have her wig pinned down as a way to lose a point or two in Rue's eyes so she wouldn't win the lip sync. The other for Trinity legacy. did it too. In All Stars Five. Remember her wig fell off too? Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Had not it, is a very, that. it is a very quick way, and we all know this, it is a very quick way to get your ass demoted. not winning a lip sync. Yeah. Is by removing a wig, not having a wig underneath. If you don't have a wig underneath. <laughs> just, just, just don't, girl. Just don't. Yeah. Mm -mm. You should not remove your wig unless you have another wig underneath, and that wig better be on there. Speaking of wigs, Evie Oddly's <laughs> wig and the rusical number. <laughs> Mama, again, we're back to this whole theme I'm talking about. Star, quote unquote, level preparation. Right. It's an issue. Yeah, there's just there's been these weird things. So I don't know if it's going to happen in every single episode. Maybe. but mm. Or maybe we're just getting them out of our system now in the early episodes. But yes. that being said, well. there are plenty of ways for you to let us know your thoughts about that. I yeah. I so want feedback. I want phone calls. I want comments. I want emails. Because <laughs> kittens, I want to know if you're in agreement with with David's uh, thought that this was all strategy on, on Miss Trinity's part with that last lip sync. Um, the way you could do that is you go to our blog, CubsOutloud.com, and you can leave a comment there. You can also send us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can also call us and leave a voicemail. The number to call is 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just type in Cubs Out Loud. Um, if you would like to join our chat, um, you best be asking... David, you got to put that theory out into the chat of the Telegram. I want to I okay. want to see what everybody has to say. For those of you that want to join us, um, Telegram is a social uh, platform, social network platform that you can comment on. It's a lot like Facebook Messenger, but better um, and more secure. <laughs> so you go to tinyurl.com backslash Telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. And that's a direct link to our particular group to join the chat if you want. Um, we typically try to put a moratorium for at least 24 hours once the episode airs so people can, you know, not spoil anything. Um 
If you would like to know about our regular shows, when they're going to be uh, airing uh, and be live on YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar dash col. If you would like to support us, there's several ways to do that. Um, you can go to our merch store, which is zazzle.com slash cups out loud. David and I are both wearing the um, consent is my foreplay drag pride edition. Uh, so it has a lovely crown and the colors. Um, we also have other items such as the mug that Damon is holding up for those of you that can't see. Um, it's a lovely mm -hmm. coffee mug that is white enamel on the outside with our Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on the front. Um, and then it has a lovely pink inside with a matching handle. But I think it comes in about three or four colors. Um, it's called the two-tone mug. Um, and then it has our uh, logo on the back as well. But we have uh, several different merch items that are on there. Uh, also, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for anywhere uh, for a dollar and up. You can uh, be a patron and be supportive of us, which helps keep uh, the lights on, quote unquote, pays for the um, stuff that we do. And uh, if you're a patron, you also get different rewards. And so our some of our patrons just got shirts um, as one mm -hmm. of the rewards uh, that the hosts uh, will be talking about in another future episode, as well as um, some other items, uh, potentially gift cards, uh, stickers, those kind of things. Or if you would like to just give us a tip, because you know you do, you can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and make a one-time monetary donation, and we would be happy to take your if you want to help promote COL, you can rate us on iTunes, uh, subscribe on Google Play Podcasts, or wherever your podcast comes from. The Cubs Out Loud Drag Race feed for the audio podcast is separate uh, from the rest of the stuff. So if you're really interested in Drag Race, which is fine, you can just subscribe to that or uh, check out everything. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Yes, if you wish to, sorry, I'm trying to get this chat, this thing in the chat before I forget. Um, <laughs> but if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on uh, as Theater Cub 79, that's T H E A T R E C U B 79, on most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work, but it's a wonderful mix of set porn and drag and tea spilling and gaming and porn and porn and porn and porn. And pop culture and daddies and all and that. And daddies and porn. Definitely. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. Um, I have a separate Twitter account I created, which is GearBear73Drag, uh, just to keep all of that kind of stuff there. Although it is get pretty difficult because the amount of people that I follow online that also follow Drag Race, I got to like keep trying to edit that and block and filter mm -hmm. words and stuff so that stuff doesn't get uh, spoiled. With that said, uh, that's the end of this episode. We will uh, catch you again in a couple of weeks uh, as we recap episodes three and four. And until then, uh, we hope that you enjoy your summer season. Have some fun out there, you know? We'll talk to Bye, you later. Bye, lovelies. Oh. <laughs>